Hey guys, it's Alex here. Now today I'm going to be telling you about a skimmerless nano tank I'm setting up, the Waterbox 55.2 Frag. Now this is part one of what will be a build series for this tank, and I'm going to tell you about the plan, why I'm doing everything, what equipment I'm going for, what filtration I'm using, and all that sort of stuff. And if you want to see it develop and progress, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I upload. Now the reason I've set up this tank is because my current tank, the Red Sea Reefer Peninsula 500, is getting overgrown. The corals are growing too quickly, so I need to trim them back and I need somewhere to put them. But this isn't just going to be a frag tank, it's going to be kind of a display frag tank. I'm going to have an aquascape, I'm going to have two or three fish in there, and a load of quirky inverts. And the idea behind this tank is that it still has to look good. One of the problems with my main tank is that it is very tall, so I never get to see my corals from top down, which is when they look their best, unless I'm stood on a stepladder. With this tank though, it's only 16 inches high, so I get to see my corals top down all the time, which will mean I'll get to see exactly what they look like anytime I like. Now normally I'm a big fan of skimmers, so why you might ask, am I going skimmerless on this tank? Well, it's being set up in my home office, which is where I work Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and it's where I record all my voiceovers for the YouTube videos. All of which means it has to be very quiet in here, so I'm going to cut down on any unnecessary equipment, chief among which is going to be a skimmer. Now, because I'm running a low bio load of probably only two or three fish at the absolute most, that shouldn't matter, and I should be able to cope without a skimmer just fine. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do for filtration in just a second. Now, no matter what you do with the tank, they are always likely to give off some kind of noise. So really, this is going to be a case of keeping that down to a minimum. And to achieve that, I'm going to try to oversize all of my pumps and powerheads and turn them right down so they're nice and quiet. For example, to start with, I have got an 8,000 litre per hour return pump, when this tank probably only needs a 2,000 litre per hour return pump. I've turned it right down to its lower setting so it does the job perfectly, and it is pretty quiet. It's a Jekob DCP, and it's not quite silent, so I might change that for something else, but whatever I do, it will be an oversized pump turned right down. It's going to be the same story with powerheads, where I'm going to overload it with pumps that are too big, and turn them down to probably around 50%, so they're as quiet as a mouse. So what about filtration then? Well, without a skimmer, I'm going to need some good filtration. So to start with, I am going for all live rock. None of this man-made malarkey that I normally go for, like real reef rock. Live rock straight out of the ocean, which has a much better capacity for filtration. But my main source of filtration will be a refugium where I will grow catomorpha algae. Now, because I need the refugium to do the bulk of the heavy lifting when it comes to the filtration, I'm going to oversize the lights and go for the biggest lights I can get in the space. Now, the sump on this water box nano isn't really set up for a refugium, and ideally, I think it's designed with a skimmer in mind. So I'm going to be removing the filter sock section so I get more space for the cato to grow. Now, if you've ever tried to remove a filter sock section from a sump, you will know it is an absolute nightmare. So I'm really not looking forward to that. But if all else fails, I'll get the hammer out and give it a proper whack. I am joking, of course. Well, partly anyway. Now, on top of that for filtration, I think I'm likely to need a phosphate reactor at some point, so I will have space for that. Although that shouldn't be a concern early doors. And of course, I'll be doing regular water changes of 10%. And on that note, I have set up an automatic water change station. Now, I haven't decided how I'm going to run it with what pumps I'm going to go for yet, but I will have a 100 litre vat, which should mean I only need to mix up water every four weeks. And the rest of the time, the water changes can just take place on their own. Now I see loads of people trying to run a tank without a skimmer, so what I'll do in this video series is report back on all the issues I have, and I'll tell you about the things that have worked as well, so you can make any adjustments to your own setup. My early thoughts are though that the Kato bed should be enough on its own, perhaps with a filter reactor, and I might need to add an automatic filter roller at some point, although that will take up a little bit of space and cost a bit of money. Now the last thing I need to tell you about this tank is that I'm going to try to run it without sand, i.e. a bare bottom. Now in theory with true live rock instead of dry man-made rock, and perhaps a bit of filter media in the sump, going bare bottom and not having sand shouldn't be a problem. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, I will add sand, because I'm not that wedded to the idea. I just like the idea of being able to clean it nice and easily, and have an absolute ton of flow. I'm also going to feed back on the water box aquarium itself. I now have a water box and a Red Sea Reefer, and I've had tanks from Clear Seal, Evolution Aqua, and Aqua One in the past, so I know what to look out for. So I'll give you a report back on how it compares to the Red Sea tanks. 
I'm also going to be adding a load of new equipment to the tank of course, like the Red Sea Reef Lead 90s that I've got here. So I'll be adding a load of reviews of the equipment I buy as I go, and I'll share my thoughts with you, both good and bad. Now this is not a sponsored tank, I bought it myself, I've bought all the equipment so far myself, and if I am given anything for free I will of course tell you straight away. So if you want to follow the journey of how this skimmerless nano tank goes, make sure you subscribe, and I'll keep you updated as I go along. Now if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.